Here on the Colour of Country Life, we enjoy having our chats about all things wool with Joe Hall, uh, the CEO of Wool Producers Australia. Thanks for joining us. Morning, Ricky. Uh, now, Joe, look, we're talk- talking this week with um, the Agriculture Shadow Minister, David Littleproud. We're hoping to reach Murray Watt when he gets back from Europe. Uh, talking all things Europe and this trade deal, uh, David Littleproud concerned that maybe the EU's product environmental footprint, he thinks will be legislated soon, will give synthetic fibres a higher sustainability rating than natural fibres like wool. I mean, do you know anything more about this one? So, yes, Ricky, we do. Uh, Wool producers have been aware of this issue for a number of years and have made a number of submissions into um, the European Commission's process into this. Uh, AWI are also doing a lot of work behind the scenes in this space. Uh, Basically, the the product environmental footprint, or PEF as they're known, um, as it currently stands or as as proposed, will uh, see synthetic fibres um, rated more environmentally friendly than natural fibres such as wool, which obviously we think is a joke. The reason for this is the uh, metrics that they measure, um, you know, the, the, the fibres on is they, they view synthetics and, and oil, their oil base, um, as the first step in production, whereas, for example, with wool, it's all the inputs that go into producing wool, such as fertiliser and, and water and, and things like that, are accounted for. So it's not, it's, it's a silly, it's a silly sort of um, metric that they're using. So there's been a lot of work done uh, over the last few years um, trying to to get that uh, revised. So it's something that we're, we're keeping an eye on, and uh, yeah, so we'll wait and see and, and wait, wait for the any news of that to come out of Europe. Well, something we picked up on recently from one university was a claim that we may have to go back to hand-washing polyester clothes because of the microplastics coming off of them, finding their way into our water supply and into our oceans, affecting the very same species. Older thought environmental activists were concerned about it. Just beggars belief. You said it was a joke that uh, somehow wool uh, is less sustainable than, say, 100% polyester. Well, it, it really does show the insanity of the proposed pest guidelines um, because wool is a sustainable, natural, biodegradable, odour-resistant fibre. Um, obviously, that means less washing. doesn't have microplastics uh, in the first place, but it's, it's less chemicals uh, through washing and, and things like that. So wool is the world's most sustainable fibre and and any claims to the contrary are are quite easily disproven. We'll let the politicians kick that football around about just where it's going to land if it comes in off the back of some EU trade deal. But uh, when we look at things, uh, all things trade, China is a big player when it comes to uh, wool purchasing here in Australia and it does look like some pent-up demand after the break in auctions has meant we've had a pretty good start to the trading year this year. Definitely, Ricky. So this is the seventh season in a row where the first sale back up its Christmas recess has has opened uh, strongly. Uh, there was concern during the recess that given the, the volumes that were going to be put, put up in last week's sale might have seen a fall in price, but uh, we saw some, some moderate gains, um, but some pretty good ones uh, in the finer end of the market. So that was really pleasing to see. Uh, China, as you said, are active again. They have, they're have coming off uh, pretty low stocks over there and also the easing of the zero COVID policies in China as seeing them active again. There is also good support from India and, and Europe as well. So long may it continue. Yeah, absolutely. Good to have some positive news. Uh, we did talk towards the end of last year uh, when it came to shearing and the availability of shearers uh, just to get the wool off. Uh, there was a bit of a backlog, as I understood it there. Have we seen any improvement of that over the uh, summer period? Um, well, we are seeing, um, obviously, not as much rain as what we did um, in, in spring and early summer. So I people are uh, able to um, get shearers in where they're available, but we do still have that um, lack of supply of shearers at the moment, so there is a fair bit of catching up to do, and just the shortage of shearers is is starting to be a really big problem within the industry. Now, I'm not terribly um, familiar in this area, but is there, you know, I used to hear there were, when it came to harvesting, for instance, you have some people would do a northern harvest, say, in Ukraine back before the war started, and then they'd come and do some in the south under visas. Is there a general sort of source country or two or three where we tend to see shearers maybe work in a hemisphere by hemisphere following the seasons? 
Well, it, it's more we were reliant on New Zealand labour for the wool harvesting season over here. We're just not seeing um, the New Zealanders returning numbers that we did uh, pre-COVID. So, and there's a number of factors for that, including um, you know better wages in, in New Zealand. They had a, a substantial pay rise uh, in May last year because uh, they also have a shortage of shearers as well. So, what we're very keen to see and what we've been lobbying for is the establishment of a reciprocal visa with wool harvesting countries uh, such as the UK and, and South Africa. So we'll continue to work on that. We're also um, in very preliminary talks uh, looking at India. Uh, they, they have a bigger sheep population than Australia. So um, with the ratification of that trade deal coming on late December in 2022, uh, discussions are starting to occur about you know, complementary uh, labour exchanges that, that may be possible under that FPA. Now, Joe Hall from All Producers Australia, some big topics we've covered already, but have we missed one? Was there one that you had sort of with a big circle around it on your uh, whiteboard coming into 2023 for wool producers in Australia? Oh, there's uh, quite a few of those, but I would have to mention uh, sheep traceability and the implementation of electronic tags to the sheep and goat industries. Uh, those those discussions, um, we had a lot of those in the last quarter of last year and, and they continue this year as we, we're we waiting to hear, I guess, how each state plans on implementing the rollout of those electronic tags uh, and different states have made different announcements. So we're very keen to see this nationally harmonise the rollout of EIDs because we do have... It is a national traceability system so uh, we're, we're, we're just waiting on states now. So we have a task force meeting next Tuesday, I think it is. So um, we'll look forward to hear, getting some updates from the jurisdictions. Very grateful for your regular updates for our Wool Producers listening on Flow FM. Joe Hall, CEO of Wool Producers Australia, thanks again for joining us. Thanks, Ricky.